Hello, F Sharp. Welcome back. We are continuing our journey of writing a ridiculously fast dictionary using just F Sharp. Last time where we left off is that we were using linear probing as a way to deal with hash coll collisions. When multiple keys were mapping to the same bucket, we need some strategy for being able to store those entries. Previously, we had been using a linked list, and then we used a linked list with the first entry that was embedded into the backing array. And with linear probing, we say like, you know what, instead of using a linked list, because a linked list will cause entries to be spread out all over the heap, let's instead insert collisions just somewhere else in the dictionary. We'll search for an open spot and we'll just put that key in value wherever that open spot is. And so when we need to go and find a value, we'll go check at that first bucket using the hash code. But if we don't find it at that first bucket, we now need to search down the array to see like, hey, is this actually stored somewhere else? And what we see on the screen right now is the results of that benchmarking. And so for integers, we are faster than the .NET dictionary. And for strings, we are faster, but the, the performance uh, improvement was not as dramatic as we had hoped. We thought we would see a more significant uplift than we did last time. So this is, this is actually kind of disappointing to be quite frank. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to explore some other techniques that have been suggested for dealing with hash collisions. And one of those strategies is Robin hood hashing. And the idea with Robin hood hashing is we try to balance out collisions and how far entries get spread out. Now I'll include the link to the description of Wikipedia, but I also want to walk you through how the algorithm works so that you can see, you can understand how it works. So we're talking about Robin hood, Robin hood hashing. And the way it works is that we have our backing array, like we always have, and we have the different buckets that our keys and values can go into. Now let's say we start with key one. And there's a value, there's a value associated with each of these keys. I'm just going to be writing the keys though, uh, just to keep space, keep it clean. And we insert that into here and there's a value associated with this. Now let's say we have K2 and we are going to insert it into here and it gets inserted. Now notice one of the things that's going on right now is that K1 and K2 are both uh, I didn't need to erase that. I'm just going to go ahead and put that back because that'll possibly be useful later. K1 and K2 are both in the bucket that they hashed to. And so when we put them in, they're essentially home. Their offset from home is zero. They're where they want to be. So now let's insert K3. And let's say K3 hashes to the same bucket as K1. Now the Robin Hood logic kicks in. We have a collision. What do we do? Well, in this case, what we do is we say, Hey, how far are each of these keys from their home? And so we need to track that somehow. And we'll go over the code as far as like what we're using to track that. But how far are they from home? In this case, K1 and K3 are both in the bucket they wanted to be in. They both hashed to this bucket. And so their offset from home is zero. Okay. So then what we would do is we would say, okay, now let's move down and say, is there an open spot here? Because we still need to insert K3. There is not. K2 is in the slot. K3 has an offset of one now. It is one away from its home bucket. K2 is still home. Its offset is zero. So K2 two in terms of like the Robin hood idea is richer than K three because it is closer to where it wants to be. And so what we're going to do is we are going to take from the rich key K two and give to the poor key K three. What does that look like? Well, what we will do is we will now evict. I'll have to fill that back in. We will evict K2, we will put K3 here, and then we will move K2 down. Now, K1 is still home. Its offset is zero. K3 has an offset of one. It is one away from its home. 
in K2 now also has an offset of one. Now let's say our hashing function is truly terrible and K4 is also mapping to this same bucket as K1 and K3. Now let's step through this process again. K4, we're trying to insert it, insert it into its home bucket so its offset is currently zero. K1 is in its home bucket, its offset is zero. Okay, no clear winner. The one that was there originally gets to stay. So K4 now moves down. It's now saying like, hey, can I be inserted in here? Well, in this case, K4 is now one away from home. K3 is also one away from home. So again, we have a tie. So no one gets evicted. Okay, so K4 now is going to go another slot down. K4 is now two slots away from its home. K2 is one slot away. So K2 is again the rich key for this analogy, the idea of Robin Hood stealing from the rich, giving to the poor. So again, I'm sorry, K2, but you're going to get evicted again. And now K4 is going to go into the slot and K2 gets kicked down again. Now, K1 is home. It's offset of zero. K3 is one away from home. K4 is two away from home. And K K4 is two away from home. And K2 is also two away from home. So that is just a real quick idea of like what it means. Now, why would you use this strategy? Why would you use this strategy? Well, the idea is that if you have multiple keys colliding, you've minimized the overall penalty for collisions. Like, because you're always comparing offsets and who is actually farther away from its home or not, nothing is going to get ridiculously far away from where you wanted to insert it originally. That was possible with linear probing. Linear probing, it's just going to keep searching until it finds an opening and it could end up like incredibly far away, depending on how, what keys and hashing you have going on. So it's entirely possible you know, that you have this one really degenerate case where it's like, Hey, I'm trying to insert here. And now I'm like, 50 slots away. So I'm like multiple cache lines away. It's really bad. With Robin Hood, you would mitigate that by saying like, no, we're going to try to spread out how we're trying to spread out the pain. <laughs> we're trying to spread the wealth. That's the idea with the Robin Hood hashing. And okay. And just so you know, for the non native English culture. So Robin Hood is referring to the legend of Robin Hood. It's a, it's an English uh, tale about a, uh, person who would steal from the rich people and give to the poor because the rich were really taking advantage of the poor. Not that that happens now. Uh, <laughs> so that's the analogy of like stealing from the rich, giving to the poor. And so no key is going to be the one that gets severely penalized. And so, and the, hopefully we've minimized the variance in terms of like how long does it take to look up a key in this? So let's look at what the code for doing this looks like. So I'm going to go in here to the fast dictionary test pro solution, the fast dictionary test project and look at Robin hood. And I'm going to look at what it means to add a struct entry. That's the most straightforward. So when I want to add a struct entry, this doesn't need to be recursive. I don't know why it's recursive. Maybe it does. Oh yeah, it does need to be recursive. Ah, da, da, da. So obviously, and you'll see why here in a second, we have a key and we have a value that we want to insert into our dictionary. We then we compute the hash code for the key. We then compute which bucket does that hash code map to? And then we call this recursive loop function. So the first argument is the hash code. The second argument is the offset for how far is this key away from where it wants to be. And the third argument is the bucket index that we're currently looking at. And we're going to start with where it would initially map to. So then instead of this code, we're going to, first of all, make sure that we have not gone over the length of the backing buckets array and why that is important will come up in a moment. We then get by reference, the current bucket, we ask, is it available? And how we're doing this is we're actually using the, the, the hash code field and we're using negative values to mean something significant. And say like, hey, is this 
bucket available. If it is, boom, easy. We just insert the values. We increment the number of entries into the dictionary and life is good. If it is not available, we will then say, hey, are we inserting into a bucket where the key already matches? And if so, we're just going to overwrite the value. That's how this dictionary is working. If it is not, let's say the keys are different. They hashed the same bucket, but they are different keys. Then what we do is this is where our offset logic comes in. It's like, okay, well, which of these keys is farther from home or not? If this new, if this new entry that we we're trying to put in is farther away from home than this bucket that we are looking at, we're going to store the previous key and previous value, put our new values in, and then call add struct entry again with the previous value. So this is the idea of like, I'm evicting what was in that big bucket before, putting in the new values, and then calling the insert function again to say like, hey, try inserting what was in here before, and the Robinhood hashing logic will say like, hey, you need to go somewhere else. Likely it might just go to the next bucket, but we need to go through this whole process. Let's say the entry that is already there is already still farther away from home than this new thing we're trying to put in. What we do is we loop and we say like, you know what? Let's look, our offset is going up by one. We're now one farther away from where we would like to be. And the bucket we are looking at has increased by one. So we're basically going down the array saying like, are you, are you available? Are you available? Are you available? And if we go off the end of it, we need to check that we actually haven't gone off the end of the array, which is why there's this check of the bucket index being, we want to make sure it's less than the bucket's length. If it's not less than the bucket length, then we are still looping. But now what's happening is we've reset the bucket that we're looking to at the beginning of the array. So we're now at index zero. And so we're going to start searching from there. So it's possible to kind of go off the end of the array and then loop back to the beginning and keep searching. So that's what this Robin Hood hashing looks like. And the key thing is this bit right here. This is where the eviction is happening. If the new entry is farther away from home than the bucket I'm trying to put it into right now, then whatever was in that bucket, I'm taking it out, putting the new stuff in and saying, hey, try to insert this thing again and it will end up being uh, farther away. Okay, let's look at what the benchmark results of that are. Not that impressive. <laughs> Um, not that impressive, uh, not, and not really better in any scenario. So what is this, what does this tell us about using the strategy? Well, it's more complex and it didn't yield anything. That's annoying. Uh, <laughs> it, mm. so this is. This is part of engineering where it's just like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to try something and maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, there's no clear wins here when I go back and forth. I mean, in the one case with the linear probing for the string for 10,000 entries, it went from 431. Here it's 361. I mean, like, okay, that's better. But Robinhood for 1,000 entries, 259 microseconds versus 248. Eh, yeah, I mean... Honestly, I was hoping for more, but what this is telling me is that linear probing is a dirt simple way of dealing with these hash collisions. And apparently it's for the, for the data sets that we are using, it's relatively robust. Now we are using uh, many different um, dictionaries and data inside of it. So, I mean, we're testing quite a few different scenarios, but yeah, this just goes to show you sometimes simpler is better. But this idea of Robin Hood hashing is actually really important. And it might come up again later. So just because it didn't work yet doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It just means in this scenario, it does not appear to have had much of an impact. Later on, though, maybe it's a lot more useful. So... This is one of those less exciting stepping stones on our journey, but I mean, you got to try things and sometimes they, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. So 
But there's, there's more. Don't worry. We are not out of tricks. There are more things to try. So thank you so much for spending some time with me. Uh, thank you for going on this journey with me. I promise that we are going to improve these numbers even more, and it's going to get more and more exciting. So it is important to kind of go through these processes, and I want to show you the failures. I want to show you the mistakes, and sometimes when we're doing this benchmarking stuff, it's not always exciting. So thank you, though, so much for spending some time with me. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.